So hello and welcome to another episode of Top 10s. I'm your host for this one, Carl Smallwood, and today is another episode of the series we're trialling, where we take questions asked by you, our lovely audience at home, and task a member of our writing team with answering that question, and then presenting it in our usual listicle format. And today we're answering the question of, what happens when you are exposed to radiation? And the person who wrote this script is one Ian Forty. Find them at the social media links below. I'm also down there as well, if you care. If you want to check if my real name is Carl Smallwood. Spoilers, it is. So most everyone in the world today knows that radiation exposure is bad. But we have little framework for what bad actually means. Like, we've probably seen images of what happens when you're exposed to radiation, but most of us, hopefully, have never experienced serious radiation exposure firsthand. If you have, I guess, let us know how much it sucks in the comments, because from reading through this script, it sounds like it really sucks. So can radiation exposure kill you? Well, yes, but how it damages your body is very complex, and of course, terrifying and gruesome process, and different kinds of radiation will affect your body in very different ways. Gamma radiation differs from ultraviolet radiation, which is different from x-rays, microwaves, or alpha particles. There's a lot to understand, so let's get to that, shall we? And the first section is, what radiation does to living cells? Now, there are two ways that radiation can kill the cells inside of your body, and by extension, you. You're not really going to get very far without your cells, after all. Now, the human body engages in cell apoptosis all of the time. It's a necessary function of life. It's sort of a pre-programmed cell death that is used to eliminate cells that the body simply doesn't need anymore. Apoptosis, for example, is how your body naturally prevents things like cancer. Your body tries to kill cells that are damaged to get rid of them. You know, if it doesn't work get rid. If this process is interfered with, cancer can proliferate, and in the embryonic stage of development, apoptosis gets rid of things like webbing that would exist between your fingers and your toes, although that's not always the case, and some people are born with that. Fun fact, one of them is Michael Phelps. One of the reasons he was such a good swimmer is that he was born with size 14 feet, um, extra flexible muscle tendons, and webbed toes. So he's effectively just got little flippers on his feety. That's why you can swim so fast. Now, radiation exposure in low doses can trigger apoptosis and cellular decay in certain types of cells. Not always, but it can. Larger doses can cause it to spread to more cell types and thus potentially cause more damage. High enough doses of radiation can make this process fatal as your cells are simply unable to properly divide and replicate, causing your organs and systems to fail. Your DNA and cell membranes are specifically damaged by radiation which causes the cell death. It can happen during mitosis or cell division and also during the interphase period which is between the periods of mitosis. The other way radiation can kill though is by preventing mitosis entirely. Your body needs to replace literally billions upon billions of cells each and every day. These cells in turn divide to create new cells and so on and so forth. A proliferating cell can divide on average about once every 24 hours. After that, the cell reaches the end of its natural lifespan and dies, but the cells it created can continue on and, you know, the process will begin anew and this will largely happen until the moment the organism dies and even for a little bit after that, which is whole other kettle of fish. So I guess if anyone out there wants to know what actually happens after you die, let us know in the comments and we'll get one of our writers right on that. So radiation exposure can stop the process of mitosis in some cells so this replacement cannot occur. This is called mitotic cell death and the result is necrosis or the death and subsequent rotting of the cells, which isn't very good. But radiation doesn't just affect your cells, because it can also affect your DNA. So let's discuss what happens there, shall we? So for anyone unfamiliar with what DNA is, it's a molecule and it's made of several compounds with a backbone made of sugar and phosphates. When exposed to radiation, the atoms in that DNA molecule can be affected, which will prevent cellular mitosis from occurring. Radiation can break the sugar and phosphate backbone of your DNA, destroying it outright. Think of radiation as like a tiny little bane going in, and your DNA is Batman and it's just snapping that shit over its knee. It can also break the hydrogen bonds that hold molecules together outright, altering the chemical structure of your DNA, which is a lot less cool than comic books and movies would have you believe. If radiation alters the structure of DNA, it can lead to a mutation. The cell may not die outright, but 
it will alter what the cell is programmed to do and make it just not work. And this can cause your cells to either operate incorrectly and the genes programmed to perform specific functions in your body will either do nothing or things that they aren't supposed to do, which as you might imagine can have a catastrophic and often lethal effect. Your body will of course try to repair damaged DNA, but if the damage is too severe, this might not always be possible. And when radiation breaks down the chemical bonds holding your molecules together, like water molecules that exist entirely throughout your body, it can create things known as free radicals in your body. These are ions of hydrogen and hydroxyls. These ions can easily bond to other molecules and at this point your body will start producing compounds like hydrogen peroxide or other damaging substances which can also lead to further DNA damage and of course cancer. And just hydrogen peroxide is the stuff people use to like, you know, bleach their hair. And spoilers, you don't want bleach in your DNA. It's not a good time. But what are the symptoms of someone who's been exposed to a great deal of radiation? Well, let's discuss that now, shall we? So there are two kinds of radiation that you can generally get exposed to. That is ionising radiation and, you've guessed it, non-ionising radiation. Now, non-ionising radiation comes in the form of light, microwaves, radio waves, and even radar. These kinds generally don't cause any damage, but as you know, some can. You know, ultraviolet light, for example, can cause you a tap. I wish I could show you an example, but I'm, I live in the UK, and annually the UK needs about three bottles of sunscreen per year, so this, this, is, this is what I've got. But yeah, just take my word for it that, you know, if you don't live in the UK, the sun can cause your skin to burn, which sucks. Likewise, if you put your hand into a microwave, it's going to cause some damage eventually, so caution is still needed. And just a general rule of thumb is just, it's a good idea not to mess with microwaves. And I'm terrified of microwaves after I researched it, because this is just a thing that I do, because I'm, I'm lame like that. Why does a device that outputs radiation, why is that just a thing you're allowed to sell for like $20 and then just keep in your kitchen next to all your food? And it's like, oh, well, for the most part, microwaves are pretty safe. And the structure of the microwave itself generally stops all the radiation from getting out. That's why, for example, if like, you know the, the glass or window in the microwave breaks, they tell you don't turn that microwave on. And just that really worried me. So I always look at my microwave with suspicion. Moving on, the most dangerous kind of radiation is ionizing radiation. Ionizing radiation is things like gamma rays, x-rays, alpha particles, and this is the kind of exposure you would get from, say, a nuclear weapon or standing too close to a nuclear reactor. This is the kind of radiation that will kill you much more quickly, and we're guessing if you click this video, Yes, more gruesomely. Humans and other living things can suffer from radiation sickness as a result of prolonged exposure, but even a single dose of ionizing radiation in a large enough dose is enough to get a person sick. But, you know, let's get some numbers on the table now for everybody. So, a single chest x-ray will dose you with about 0.01 rads. A CT scan would be 1 rad. And you need about 50 to 100 rads to begin suffering from radiation sickness. And a dose of about 400 will kill you just shy of 100% of the time. Now, with those numbers in mind, let's jump to a pretty visual example. Chernobyl. And specifically, the elephant's foot in Chernobyl, which you've likely seen pictures of. If not, I hope we have the rights to put one here. Effectively, this was just like, that That was the core of Chernobyl. That That's the, that's the shit that caused all the bad stuff. Now, the elephant's foot was kicking off about 10,000 rats per hour, and it's calculated that someone standing within three feet of it would be dead in about 150 seconds. Now, the acute health effects of radiation exposure include things like skin burns. The speed at which this burn appears is generally considered to be a way that you can tell how badly you were affected by the radiation. The more severe the burn, the more severe the radiation sickness is likely to be. So, yeah. Just good rule of thumb, the faster you experience symptoms, the more likely you are to really, really, really need to get some help. And those symptoms can include hair loss, muscle weakness, vomiting, bleeding from the mouth, gums, nose, and rectum, all at the same time, of course, sores, the sloughing off of the skin, fever, dehydration, and many, many more. But yeah, just the idea that you'll be bleeding from every orifice and said orifices will be sloughing off. Just not a good idea, right? No one needs to go down to try and wipe the blood from their bum hole and the bum hole fall off. Yeah, it's a gauntlet of bad news, and those are just the acute effects. The long-term effects, which aren't as acute but still just as dangerous, can lead to numerous kinds of cancer. They can also cause liver failure, infertility, birth defects, scarred lungs, kidney issues, and many, many more. Which probably has you thinking, well, what's the most dangerous kind of radiation? Which is a valid question, and there's a lot of radiation out there, and it probably pays to know which kind to avoid the most. Not that you would be able to tell the difference at the time, and it's not like you'd be able to do anything about it after the fact, once it happened, but still, 
you know, knowing is half the battle, right? So, yeah, anyone who's seen or watched or read anything involving the Incredible Hulk probably knows that gamma radiation is among the most dangerous kind of radiation. This is the kind of radiation that's given off by nuclear weapons. Gamma rays largely agree to kill you the fastest. And this is because gamma rays are incredibly powerful and very high energy. And the only real way to stop it is with a couple of inches, if not a foot, of pure lead. Without this, the gamma rays are able to just pass directly through your body, which is what makes them so dangerous, as they can cause ionisation, which we talked about earlier, can lead to all that weird stuff with your DNA and cells. And because you can't really stop it, it's just constantly being bombarded by just all these rays, the gamma rays going straight through your body and affecting everything and anything they come into contact with. Then you have alpha particles, which are paradoxically some of the least dangerous and most dangerous depending on how you're exposed. They're the least dangerous because they're not really that powerful. They can't penetrate your skin, for example. They're also very heavy, which is a weird concept to grasp, but just go with it. And because they're so heavy, it means that they don't have enough energy to really do anything because they use most of that energy getting away from the atom in the first place. And these are largely produced as a result of nuclear decay from things like uranium and plutonium. That said, if you happen to inhale something that is emitting alpha particles, they can damage you internally. And internally, alpha particles are among the most dangerous kinds of radiation. So they're safe, relatively outside of the body, dangerous inside of it. Then you have things called beta particles, which can be stopped by a layer of clothing, but that belies their danger because just because they can stop by clothing doesn't mean they're stopped by skin. And when they get inside your skin, they can cause things like burns. And if you inhale fallout or particles that emit beta radiation, this could also prove to be fatal. Then you have X-rays, which despite the fact we use them in medicine are also potentially dangerous. Like gamma rays, they are pure energy photons and not particles like alpha or beta particles. And the main difference between X-rays and gamma rays is that X-rays come from the cell's nucleus, while X-rays come from outside of this. They're less powerful as a result and don't penetrate as well. Though they can still penetrate reasonably well, just not through your skeleton. So I guess just wear a, a, a suit of skeleton and you'd be okay. Just don't mess with x-rays. But what about the least dangerous kind of radiation? Now it's not really correct of us to say that any kind of radiation is safe. The amount and type of exposure is what you really need to be worried about. That's why an x-ray is potentially deadly, but we can still use it safely in medicine when used in moderation. As long as you limit the amount of exposure to something that the human body can tolerate, you're generally going to be okay. But consider this to be a guideline, not a hard rule. Generally speaking, any kind of ionizing radiation is going to be especially dangerous to the human body. Non-ionizing radiation is considered to be less dangerous, but doesn't mean that it's totally safe. Non-ionizing radiation can excite the atoms in a molecule, but it does not have the power to strip electrons away like ionizing radiation does. Things like power lines, your, your phone, light bulbs, radio waves, are all examples of non-ionizing radiation that we encounter each and every single day that we generally don't have a problem with. Officially, non-ionizing radiation has not been found to cause cancer in humans. That said, for decades, and have probably in the comments section of this video, you'll have people insisting that living near power lines or things that emit 5G are very dangerous and causing all sorts of problems and cancer. Like the only problem you get from being near 5G is just, you know, you can download and view GIFs quicker, I suppose. You know, again, officially, there's never been any link proven between those things, although people will insist, again, in the comment section. And there's never been any proof, at least that we're aware of at the time making this video and looking through the sources, that your phone is dangerous, at least not in terms of the radiation it gives off. Though, just general bit of good advice is um, phones can explode if they're made by Samsung, at least. Don't keep it next to your nuts. Probably not a good idea. You don't want something that could potentially explode right next to the boys, right? Anyway, let's move on. And now let's talk about what nuclear weapons can do to living things. So when a nuclear weapon goes off, there are several ways it can cause destruction and death. In just 10 seconds, the fireball formed when the blast can reach its full size. The force of this blast alone is enough to level buildings, pop eardrums, and cause internal bleeding, even in people many miles away from the blast site. The thermal radiation that happens in the blast site is also really intense and can vaporize anything living or otherwise. Even people hidden underground believe themselves to be safe in an underground 
underground bunker or something like that can also be affected as the fire consumes everything, including the oxygen in the air. Now, the most powerful nuclear weapon ever fired was Russia's Tsar bomber in 1961. A 50-megaton yield made it about 3,800 times stronger, and the bomb dropped on Hiroshima. The power and devastation of the weapon was almost unimaginable. But hopefully we can help you visualise it with some facts about the explosion. One is that it produced a mushroom cloud 37 miles high that was visible from 620 miles away. There's also the fact that it destroyed a town 34 miles away from the blast zone. Speaking of things away from the blast zone, you've got Norway and Finland, right? some people in which had their windows shatter due to the force of the blast wave. To put some numbers on that, buildings as far away as 100 miles were damaged. But perhaps the scariest thing about the explosion is that there were people over 60 miles away that suffered third degree burns as a result. And third degree burns are nothing to laugh at. And this bomb caused them in everybody within 60 miles. Beyond the initial blast, you also have electromagnetic interference, which would destroy all electronics over a wide area. Whole power grids would fail. A single modern warhead is at least five times more powerful than any used in World War II and has enough power to level an entire city. A 100 kiloton warhead, for example, five times more powerful than the strongest two used in Japan, could kill just shy of half a million people in New York City alone. The initial thermal flash from a blast only lasts a second, but can start fires and burn people upwards of 20 miles away. The ensuing blast wave would also level buildings for several miles in every single direction around the blast, and a 10 megaton warhead could essentially destroy all of New York from Long Island to Newark. But then you have the fallout, so the uniquely devastating power of nuclear weapons is not the initial blast, though the destructive potential of that cannot be understated. It's the fallout. This refers to the particles that fall to Earth after a nuclear incident. Anything exposed to that radiation during the blast, be it dirt or bits of buildings and other things destroyed by the explosion, they are all shot into the air during the initial explosion and they become irradiated and then fall back down to Earth. But this is what makes them dangerous. Fallout over the short term and the long term is really, really bad. Much of the radiation in the fallout will dissipate over a course of a matter of days, which is why you're told to stay inside for up to 24 hours after a nuclear bomb has gone off. Like, personally, I'm just going to run towards that thing. Just, no. I'm not dealing with any of the fallout. I, I have played the games, I've seen the show. My odds of meeting Ella Purnell are effectively nil. I'm running towards the blast. But... Just because they say it will generally be safer after 24 hours doesn't mean that things will actually be safe because there's those alpha and beta particles we mentioned earlier which can persist for years if not decades and given that nuclear fallout is basically just radioactive dust the odds of you inhaling it are very very high. But what about if you do happen to be exposed to radiation and you want to go about recovering? Well. Initial treatments for radiation exposure are largely focused on decontamination. Your clothes need to be stripped and burned and your body cleaned to remove any lingering particles that could make exposure worse. Remember, some of these things can be you know, basically microscopic. You know, they talk about like skin, like you're breathing in other people's skin particles all day. If those skin particles happen to be um, harboring alpha or beta particles, that could be causing you, like, you know, just, just big problems. Now, recovering from radiation sickness entirely is possible though it does take a very very long time and there still might be long-term lingering issues also it's not easy it can take years to just get the treatment sorted treatment which can include things like blood transfusions marrow transplants and medications to stave off the infections you will now be uniquely susceptible to you may also need to take things like potassium iodide this can help prevent your thyroid from absorbing radioactive iodine prussian blue can help bind radioactive particles to your body at which point you can then excrete them and speaking of pooping out radiation you can also take some diethylene triamine pentalactic acid. I hope I pronounced that correctly. I spent so long practicing it. This substance will bind to radioactive metal, so you can also poop those out. And remember, like, you know, as we said earlier, radiation sickness can cause your bum hole to fall off. So try pooping out the radioactive metals as your bum hole is melting and bleeding. So yeah, that's what radiation sickness and radiation as a whole can do to a person. So the, the best bet to avoid any of those things is just to not go to things that are radioactive, which, as we mentioned, is technically probably the device you're watching this on right now.
So thank you for watching. Um, hopefully people out there found this video to be entertaining, informative and educational. I certainly found the script to be all three of those things. If you're inclined to agree, you can go give the script writer Ian Forte some love over on their socials linked below. I've been your host, Carl Small. This has been a new format we're trialling on Top 10s, one that I'm greatly enjoying because it allows me to learn new things. And if you would like to suggest something for us to research, do so in the comments section below. But otherwise, thank you for watching and go out there and have the day that you deserve. No idea. Radiation. Can make your bum all fall off. Bad times.